first question is, what drew you to the role of Gravik? It was that Gravik was was pitched to me as a um, a really dark character, and I'd never uh, I'd never played a villain before, I guess, and um, just had some great conversations with the producers, and uh, I came on really early when they were still developing the show, so there were lots of ideas, and we had some great conversations about, you know, the style of the show and what their intentions were and. They wanted to create a, a, a thriller, espionage um, type vibe, and um, yeah, in a, in a way that felt grounded and real. So that really appealed to me, and and uh, and Gravik uh, sort of building him around uh, that tone just felt really appealing to me at the time, and it was a, 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 a kind of a role that I'd never played before, so it felt really interesting for me. So the next one is, what was it like to play a villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Well, I'd never played a villain before, so it was really my first experience of playing a villain. And I think what was interesting about this was that he he was, um, Gravik was a character that we wanted to make as real as possible. And that it was really important to us that he was that we made him as as dangerous as possible, and that his relationship towards violence was uh, really real, and that um, yeah, we we um, so to me it, it felt like I was in a drama. I, I thought at some point it wasn't about being in the MCU. It was just about getting to play a really uh, interesting and, and complicated role with a like a terrific group of actors, man. Like the cast was just like astonishing. So, you know, and there was a couple of scenes I read that, you, you know, with Gravik is with uh, Talos and Fury and some of the writing Brian Tucker created was, was just awesome. It felt like pieces extracted from a play. So there was a part of me that knew it was gonna be a lot of fun to like acting. Um, but yeah, it was really, it was, it was a lot of fun. I guess you responded already this, but what did you enjoy the most about this experience? What I enjoyed the most, I guess, was I had a great time with the stunts team. Uh, you know, Rob and the guys were so, they were so all over it. They like, especially with Gravik because of, because of his relationship to violence, I guess, and his ease around murder, uh, mass murder, uh, you know, working with those guys in the stunts team, like that's what they're good at. So they, they have, you know, they're all like highly qualified in all sorts of martial arts and gun experts and, you know, they're sort of like pain teachers. Uh, so yeah, I enjoyed that because it helped me with the character and, um, yeah, and then there, were, there's a, there was a couple of scenes that, there's one scene with, with Sam that, that comes towards the end of the show and, and one with Ben, I think, in episode three or four. And I read those really early on and, and uh, yeah, they, the writing really excited me. Brian really put together some really dope scenes and um, it was just like at the time, I was like, I'm gonna get to play these with Sam and Ben. So yeah, I was, I was all in. Thank you for that. The next one is in general terms. Tell us what Gravik's grievances is and what he wants. I think I think it's Gravik's grievances many things really, but I guess hypocrisy is the word that comes to mind. I, I think he feels completely let down by uh, the leadership in his life one of those leaders being Fury and the other Talos. And um, I think we meet him at a point in episode one where he he no longer trusts anyone and that he, um, he's he got a bone to pick with these guys and he's, he's really pretty far gone. Um, like my feeling was always that like, here's a guy who's, who's really not well and uh, he's sort of riddled with 
with rage and, and, and hatred to a degree that like to me felt like it had to be we had to go as far as we could go with that and um, uh, I think on one level he what he wants is to uh, to gain as much power as possible in order to inflict as much pain and chaos as possible um, while Nick Fury and Talos witness it happening. Um, uh, and so, yeah, it was trying to c create as many layers around that as possible. So you feel that there is something going on with this guy underneath that's not what he's saying and what he's saying and doing are two completely different things and that when he's speaking to people there's just needs to feel like there's something else going on underneath that is that feels uncomfortable um so yeah thank you for that the next one is there were a lot of detailed practical sets built for this series mm -hmm. how did they inform your acting Hopefully. yeah t so i'm trying to think of some of the sets um yeah, well, there's the reactor room and uh, New Skrullis. What was my favorite set? There was a couple of scenes. There was one where they, they created the National Portrait Gallery and uh, there was some paintings on the wall that, um, that were really great. It was like putting this character in a context that felt so out of place. And um, it was just really interesting to get to explore, oh, what would this guy's relationship be to somebody's paintings and some of these people and I think um, specifically there were certain like leaders from history that he's referring to and uh, yeah just creatively it was really fun I think they did a really great job with that portrait gallery it really felt like we were in a gallery and um, the paintings felt really real this was probably my favorite set and some of the uh, the the like the the war scene well not war but like the um, the shootout scenes and when the on the airport run, some of the, the the stunts days when we were outside with the helicopters and the and the ropes coming down, it was a lot of fun. How was it working with Ben Mendelssohn and Samuel Jackson? Yeah, I mean, they, those those two were the reason why I couldn't say no to the job. I guess they uh, it was a lot of fun, and there was there was I think it was one day there was one day where I was on set with both of them at the same time, and that was carnage. Um, yeah, there was just a lot of energy and a lot of fun. You put those two together and it just goes off. Um, but yeah, it was great to act with them in, in, in different ways. Talk about your experience working with a director. Yeah, me and Ali, we met really early on and we had lots of really, you know, great conversations about character and story, which is always, it's what you want, really. And um, yeah, we, I guess we really, we tried to tune in as much as possible with like how, like how how do we like believably make this guy feel as dangerous as possible and how do we how do we make him feel really real within this and I guess yeah grounded and dangerous are the two words that come to mind and like what was his relationships toward violence towards violence and yeah just each day we would just have we would just make sure that we were keeping him on the same track. And um, yeah, Ali was a great um, steerer of the ship in that way. Uh, he was open to as many rehearsals as we needed in the morning, as much time as we needed to get the scene right before we started shooting, to make sure we found all the, the right layers and that we, 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 we landed on the best possible version of the scene before we start shooting. Um, we got to do that every day. So there was kind of, there's no rehearsal before you start shooting, but Bef before we we got to work each day, we'd make sure that we had the time on the floor to to do that. So I'm really grateful f for, to Ali for that because um, you don't always get that kind of time. And lastly, um, if you could describe this series in a word, one word, what would it be and why? I guess the word I would is either I would say dark or no, I'd say thriller. Um, Espion. It's very really hard to do one word. Um, different, mm -hmm. yeah. For, Mar for for Marvel fans, I guess that's probably the most appropriate word because it's, uh, yeah. I don't think they've tapped into this type of genre 
quite yet in the way that Secret Invasion's doing it. <laughs>